be eight. Uh, time now to get back to today's uh, news stories with Giles and Vanessa. Um, when oh. I was at school, yes. yeah. the teacher said, confidence is about walking into the room in the right way. And if you walked into the classroom in the wrong way, he sent you out and made you walk back in. Because you often you just come into the room and he said, no, no, come on, come on. Yes. You may go out of the room, get yourself ready, and you walked in. He said, if you walk in like a winner, you'll be a winner. Oh, Isn't that interesting? Excellent. And Michelle obviously walks in like a winner. Oh, yeah, she was absolutely, since you was I a toddler. I love that. Yeah. You walk in like a winner, you'll be a winner. Yeah. OK, well, I'll tell you, this leads on to the next story quite nicely, because there is a lovely, cute little toddler that did walk in front of the Queen. Now, yesterday, <laughs> Queen Camilla was pictured during her Northern Ireland tour, uh, but the attention was not on the Queen. It was on this gorgeous, very cute Fitzwilliam <laughs> Corey Salmon, salmon uh, in his tux. And we are actually joined by his mum and dad, uh, oh. Zoe and William. Hey. My goodness. I, can you believe that all the attention has been on your very, very cute little boy and not on the Queen? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we cannot get over it. We, we started to see the news coming in late last night. And we couldn't sleep. My fix has slept like a proper baby, like a good 12 hour sleep. So we need more royal visits, please, so we can yeah, have a good space. So we're exhausted, please, in good form, aren't you? Look, he looks <laughs> like he's, having, he's living his best life. Oh. <laughs> he's so cute. <laughs> That's not because he's got great big right, boots to eat every day. Sorry, I didn't hear that. He's so cute. Thank you so much for putting him back in his tux. He's just, oh, he's so scrumptious. Oh, he couldn't resist it, honestly. He, he loves to get dressed up, don't you? He chose this for the Queen. And, and, and she was so freaking with him. Such a lovely lady. It was such a special day. Oh, brilliant. And, and, and how does Fitzwilliam think about all this, all this new attention? Well, the thing is, Fitz naturally is very chatty and very sociable, but he's never been in that environment before with, you know, so many photographers and we didn't know what he was going to be like, but he really took to it and he had a great day and I, I don't really think any of it phased him. It'll be funny when he's older, showing him all the press and telling, telling him all about it. He'll not believe it. <laughs> oh, was the Queen, sorry, was the Queen scheduled to do the stop in the bakery or was, how did it come about? Yes, well, Will could tell you yes, the story well. <laughs> we got a phone call a number of weeks ago um, to say she'd be coming, which was, was amazing. And yes, yeah, scheduled visit. Uh, didn't expect Fitz to perform just as well for us, but yeah, it was an exciting day all around for us, yeah, the okay. business in the area. So it was lovely. lovely. Yeah, we obviously, Fitz and I came up to support the family and the family business, but we obviously didn't anticipate um, the reaction um, with Fitz. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we'll, we'll leave you to it. Get some cake down. Yeah. Um, lovely to see you, Zoe. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you, William. Bye. 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 Oh, yeah, that that Zoe, Blue it's Peter, Peter fame. Zoe is, Zoe is a Blue Peter person. Yes, yeah, I really yeah. Zoe Salmon, yeah. But isn't that the most delightful little boy oh, you have ever divine. seen in the history of the world? <laughs> what gorgeous. do you think um, Queen Camilla would have thought of that? Well, Queen Camilla, I, I know, had a double whammy of a day because she went without the king and therefore had to do twice yeah. as much. And I think in the morning it was already planned that they would go and visit small businesses in Northern Ireland. And so there, there it was. She turned up to do that and there was that little boy. But um, she is very... Well, you've met her, you know. Well, she loves she's, her grandchildren. Yeah. And, she, and he's just a winner. And he's she's one very, of those very good. people just exuding USP, isn't he? Do you it's know what? Tremendous. With everything going on, fair play to her, right? Yeah. Doing her royal duties. Her. And, and then in the afternoon, because it was World Poetry Day at Hillsborough Castle, there was a celebration of Irish poetry with, with great poets and performers. So it was a really big day on the day before she'd been in the Isle of Man. Um, she's doing her thing. She certainly is. Good. So, who wouldn't like to go on the road? If I was a royal, I'd I spend my life on cake shops yeah. and butchers and stuff. I'd be like, yes, you would. what are your sausages like? Oh, I'll take some. <laughs> and would be over the moon that I bought a sausage. And can I say, you'd look we'll, cute in, tux, in a tuxedo as well. Because <laughs> there's still the little boy about you. <laughs> well, uh, from one cute kid to another, but would you take your kids on a hen do? Vanessa, I can't wait to get oh your take goodness. on this. And mum has divided opinion online. I have to take her eight month old baby and her husband with her on a Hindu after she couldn't face leaving the baby at home.
Uh, I mean, uh, look, uh, I, I think not everyone gets to do absolutely everything all of the time. Sometimes the timing is just wrong. And I would say that a hen do is the time when you do not think about A, babies, or B, husbands. Whether you have them or not, you don't think about them. Even the person getting married doesn't think about a husband on the hen do. That is the entire point. And I'm sure this woman is lovely and she's obviously a devoted mother and a great wife. She's obviously charming, but I think she could have said, I'll see you Afterwards, ladies, you hit the floor running. You dance around your handbags, absolutely cop off with the waiter, and I'll see ah. you. I'll see you at the <laughs> end, and you can tell me all about it, especially the X-rated stuff. I don't think you just schlep along the baby and the husband on the Hindu. But what do I know? We have heard it all now. Cop off with the waiter. Why not? <laughs> Is yeah. Vanessa Felsen... Who doesn't want to cop off with the waiter? Don't mind. Well, good Or indeed, waitress. Me. It really well, depends. Can you tell me something then, since yes, you know about yes. these things? What is the correct age for no longer breastfeeding your baby? I ask this. Not for a friend, but for myself. <laughs> I, I happen God, to be... what is he saying to me? No, no. Stop I it. was in a bookshop the other day. Oh, brother. <laughs> oh, is this not an issue? <laughs> Are you allowed to discuss this? How old this? is the person being breastfed? <laughs> I'm just going to be over here for a bit. <laughs> the child was five years old. Right, okay. Well, do you know what? I've actually got a little confession to make. Oh. Yeah. I've been on a hendo and I, I, I've took my little boy and, and, and his dad and I put him in a hotel up the road so I could go back to there. But he, he, was, he was around the same age, to be fair, and I didn't want to miss out on my really good friend's hendo, but I did put them in a hotel... Up the road. That's what this lady did as yes. well. Yes, mustn't impinge. Yeah, but yeah. then it was a big regret, actually, because I wanted to stay up my friends and I thought, oh, you know, got to get back you now. You fell between the two schools. And in yeah. answer to Daz's question, when is the right age to stop breastfeeding? I think mm. absolutely and entirely up to the mother. Excellent. And the baby. Excellent. Everybody can make their own decision. Let me know when I can come back. And <laughs> nobody <laughs> should tell anybody else what that they think is right or wrong. We've got to learn to be comfortable with these issues. Absolutely. Oh, I am very comfortable. But it's more... No, no dictatorial <laughs> yeah. edict Good. on that at all. Now we know. Um, yes. We're going to go on to our next story now. Uh, kids choose YouTube over TV with the family. And I, I don't know about you, the, the young children, they are totally addicted to the absolute nonsense on YouTube these days. Well, aren't I just they, think, Vanessa? all I really think about this is, Obviously, children will watch what they fancy watching, what captures their imagination, what they like. They like watching it in their own time, whenever they feel like it, rather than, as we used to have to do, wait all week, you know, for Friday night, when it was, you know, Friday, it's five to five, it's yeah. Cracker Jack, and it was really yeah. exciting. You waited the whole week, and Blue Peter was twice, and Magpie, if you were allowed to watch the other side, and, you know, you watch with your mum, and you watch with your siblings, and that was a lovely thing to do, because it was kind of communal family thing. So the thing that is a shame about this, I think, is that it's a kind of splintering of family life, isn't it? So so they're watching their thing, Mum might be watching her thing, Dad's watching something on the phone, people aren't doing it together, except Strictly, which is a massive unifier. Except they are. And, and the new gladiators, Here's which the everyone loves. So the, the research from media experts, uh, Inga's analysis said that there's 30% decline in 16 to 30... I mean, 16 to 34 year olds. Yeah, it's a big, big, I mean, big group. ...watching the TV shows in the company of over 55s in the last 10 years. But twas ever thus. So when you were a kid, yeah. you probably watched a bit of... Muffin the Mule, or whatever it was, right? Exactly. Muffin the, the Mule. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. right? And yeah. you, so you're watching kids' TV when you got in. Mm. Your parents wouldn't be watching that with you. My mum used to watch it with yes. us. Right? My mother watched and it. I think then, the mother's watched it with us, didn't My they? point is this. There's, yeah. A, there's still a point to view. So there's, yeah. still, there's still shows like... you Look, look at now. Sorry. Uh, Gladiators. Yes, yeah, uh, Mars Singer. Strictly. Yeah. There's still a point to cross-generational point yeah. of view on certain nights yeah. of the television, right? Yeah. And... The bigger issue, really, is the algorithms that... The, the, oh, the, I, I the, catch the, my little boy watching these things on YouTube and I think, are they, is it trying to dumb him down or something? Because what he watches is, is absolute nonsense. I don't know what, how he's got to that or where he's got to that, but, yeah, what he watches... The kids and watching their own thing, I don't think it's changed. Yeah. Doing their own thing has still changed. Yeah. But what they watch... I think, yeah. what, what, I think what's changed is the, it, the, the parents used to be in control of the television and in mm -hmm. control of the off button. And when Zebedee said it was time for bed on the Magic Roundabout, we dutifully marched off to bed. Off went the television and up we went. That's now it. you're after a bottle of yeah. Prime with KSI and a duffer. Yeah. This <laughs> is a global <laughs> phenomenon. I happen to be speaking this week to somebody from Botswana and then somebody from Zambia. And the lady from Zambia was telling me that when she was young, in the, t the first ten years of the century, they used to play street games. She was telling me about the street games. But now, she said, they're all on their screens. Yeah. And I talked to the people from Botswana. Every kid is on their screen all the time. The good news is, though, in some households, on a Sunday afternoon, the grandchildren are finding an old movie 
on YouTube mm -hmm. and selling tickets to their grandparents, Aww. drawing the curtains, selling tickets and opening the fridge and sending us back our own mini magnums. <laughs> <laughs> and we are sitting there with the mini magnums having bought tickets to see a film on YouTube. Very good. Yeah, good I can't idea. wait to sit down with my little boy and watch, like, good Saturday night entertainment. Yeah. All right, lastly, Vanessa, yes, what's this? Yeah. What are your biggest turn-offs? Bad news for football fans trying to bag a date. Apparently, bragging about being a football fan on dating profiles is one of the biggest turn-offs for women. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> a survey uh, from Tinder has revealed that many brag about being football fans and their dating profiles uh, least likely to get a date. Football ranked like 28th of interest. Passions for golf, cricket. Oh, Who, what, what are these people thinking? Rugby and boxing are also turn-offs. However, mm. men who show off the gym workouts and like to travel are very popular. Oh, blimey. I think it's all about the delivery, isn't it? So if you're a sports fan, but you can make it funny, you can make it interesting, you can look deeply and longingly into the eyes of the female that you're discussing it with in a sexy and arrestingly and beguiling manner, then fine. If you're dead boring about football or boxing or fishing or any other thing, yes. it's an absolute turn-off. So it's about the way you say it, Passion. the way you sell it, and whether you make the person that you're telling feel yes. as if you realise that they're in the room. <laughs> Just like this. Have, like this. Have it's, men it's about the oomph. And it's men about the va va God. I went on a date the other day, I'm not oh, joking. Oh, oh, and this guy yeah, said to me, he was angles, unbelievably, so. excruciatingly boring. Tying and then the shock, he looked up and great. said to me, Am I being boring? Oh. Well, I'm beautifully brought up, so I couldn't just go yes, and I didn't want to yawn, so I just went... Mm. And then about <laughs> ten minutes later, he said, again, he was being excruciatingly, oh, agonisingly boring, and he said, Am I being boring? And I said, <laughs> I just thought, oh, come on, mate. And I said, it is deeply unfair to make me responsible for this. You have now asked me twice if you're boring. I said, self-edit. If you think you're being boring, stop doing it. Don't ask me. It's, I'm not the referee and umpire it's, of whether you're boring or not. It's agonising. Yeah, right? but your face must have given it away. I tried not to. I was kind of yeah. smiling. Like, oh, <laughs> You'll be surprised to hear that shortly afterwards he ordered the cheque. <laughs> <laughs> it is so ridiculous. Have men learned nothing over the centuries? Don't talk about yourself. If you're with Vanessa, ask talk about her. Exactly. Ask about her. How... me. Ask, ask, ask about you. Ask about you. The hair, the eyes, the beautiful dress. All of that stuff. All of that. What, yeah. how, where's your career exactly. going? Exactly. They'll love Tell it. me, do I'll you have children? I can't believe you have yeah, children. I have grandchildren. Grandchildren. Would you when I look so young? That kind of Look away from the eyes, Vanessa. What are they called? Look away from the eyes, Vanessa. You'll be in trouble. I'm in love already. Yeah, I am too. It's amazing. Who is it? Like I said, this made a career out of it. Look away from him. No, I really want to. Bell. <laughs> Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, there's an erotic child. Vanessa, yeah. come on, <laughs> snap out of it. Oh, yeah. Great. Can I give you my football? <laughs> He's yeah. done it again. <laughs> Competition time. Now your chance to win. Uh,